Let us pray. Come to us now, God, that your gospel might come to life in our lives and transformed, the world will simply not know what to do with us. In Christ we pray, amen. Do you think you'll see Earl again? I'm a young seminary graduate, almost pastor, sitting on the couch in the home of Warren Wong-Kyung Lee, demon director, professor of Asian American ministry, former pastor at my home church. That jump shooting, no look over the shoulder, passing fellow, he's out there somewhere. Uh, biting his tongue so he doesn't say amen. amen. <laughs> not biting his tongue. My brother was killed in a car accident before that moment. His sister was killed in a car accident a few years before. Do you think you'll ever see Earl again? He asked me. It's the question of our lives, one of the many forms the question takes. Who am I? What am I here for? Is this all there is? Why things happen the way they do, as Lila asked the old reverend she marries in Marilyn Robinson's new book. God knows things, stuff happens. School shootings, labor disputes, relationships fall apart. Congress does nothing. More school shootings, protest marches. People get old, sick, forget their lives and loves. Tragedies happen. The young die of neglect, hunger, abuse. Poverty grows, more random shootings, midterm elections promise more noise and still nothing resembling democracy from the next Congress. The worst weather in its history happens to Buffalo, New York. Nothing changes in the Middle East. Another shooting, more avoidable death. A dialogue in, on religion turns into a diatribe on reason. The president does something huge for millions living in shadows. The Riverside Church passes a budget. Staff come, staff go. We watch reality on TV, entertainment consumes and transforms news. John Stewart makes us laugh and think. CNN makes us shake our heads and cry. Crazy gets more normal. Our differences continue to separate and divide us, cause us to puzzle at the other and wonder, if not worse. The Baptist among us can't figure why some sprinkle unknowing infants. The Presbyterians don't want to go near the pool with all that cold water. <laughs> Waiters? Really? <laughs> what does any of it matter in the end? Do we really know? We baptized again today. We did so two weeks ago. We'll do it again and again as people come to us with the hope of a life among us 
in the providence of God. What a joy divine, this possibility of a beloved community, this being wanted and wanting to share what we have and who we are as a congregation. You do get that more than a hint at election in the text Reverend Amy Hayden read. We have obtained an inheritance, are destined according to the purpose of Christ. We're special. That's why folks want to join, isn't it? We're especially special at the Riverside Church in the city of New York. Nothing pretentious about that, it's just our name. It's just our building, our school, our 26 ministries, our proud history, our priceless artwork, our noble tower and carillon, the music that so invites our transport into the mysteries, the depth of God. In a world of domination by the 1%, of the rule of money, capital, profit and property, of the entitlement of stars, even bright lights in the world of religion, we must be aware of the dangers of election. And who better than Paul to bring this to our attention? Paul, as in circumcised on the eighth day, he tells us in his magnificent letter to the Philippians, and he means not as an adult, on the eighth day, Paul, he's of the people of Israel. He's not just a Jew by choice, of the tribe of Benjamin. It's a family genealogy. He's not just somebody, random person off the street who gets a new member certificate. He's a Hebrew born of Hebrews, he tells us, meaning probably they speak Hebrew. In my house, it's not a second language. As to the law of Pharisee, the Jewish party committed to absolute obedience to the whole law, not just random proof texting. As to zeal, a persecutor of the church, Paul's work was attacking the unrighteous. He didn't just gossip about it. As to righteousness under the law, and here's the capstone, Paul says he was blameless. Well, we must remember, as Paul does, this election is not because Israel is special, because we are special, because we're in and they're out, we are chosen, we are elected to serve for all humanity, to light the way for others, to save creation from sale to the highest bidder and from those who would despoil it for mere profit. We're elected to shelter the homeless, to visit the prisoner and welcome his or her home to hold accountable those who abuse the bodies and the dignity of the dispossessed, to help people vote, to welcome the stranger who, it turns out, pumps our gas, ferries us around town, cuts our grass, cleans our homes, waits in the cloister lounge for a shower on Tuesdays and Fridays sits on the pew just ahead of us, parents a child alone, hopes in the solitude of a skilled nursing home for a visit from anyone, isn't low wage, but is underpaid. Please. 
please do be lifted up out of the ordinary at the end of Pentecost into the transcendence of the poetry of this beautiful prose and remember how prophetically grounded is the message of these lovely words easily misunderstood at the distance of these centuries. I love the parables, the often confounding stories of the gospel that Dr. Butler has so skillfully interpreted these last weeks. The kingdom of God is like, and I am profoundly moved by the rhythm, by the rhythm of the epistles here in Ephesians when the apostle whispers into the ears of would-be disciples, our ears. So I beg you not to miss the down-to-earth political realities of what we are told in these few lines in Ephesians, realities that undermine the simple-minded goulash some still try to digest. Don't mix politics and religion. Don't bring all that economic justice stuff in here. Just give me Jesus. Far above all rule and authority and power and dominion, above every name, not only in this age, but in the age to come. This is treason in Rome in the first century. This is crucifixion territory. Caesar isn't where the buck stops. It's not the White House or the church council or the senior minister's suite on the 19th floor. God put this power to work in Christ. And the ask here is to put that power to work in our lives, that with the eyes of your heart enlightened, you may know what is the hope to which you have been called. We're not talking about the best turkey ever here. A white Christmas this year, please. No, this is about loving God and neighbor as self, about peace, and justice, righteousness like a mighty river separating the sheep from the goats in the language of Matthew in service to the least of these, those whom Jesus says are members of my family. God is here. God is all. We've meandered through ordinary time to this last moment before the liturgical year starts all over again with the silence, the anticipation, and the mystery of Advent. Don't go there just yet. Resist the foolishness and the injustice of Black Friday, and recall instead, for just a moment, the noisy, in with a bang beginning of Pentecost, the confusion and communion of the many voices of our humanity, the awe and wonder, signs and sharing of a community holding everything in common, singing, praying, living for a new world. The long season of Pentecost comes to an end on this Sunday. Christ the King, the reign of Christ. Ordinary time ends in the extravagant assertion that at the very center of things, all things, 
is Jesus, Christ, Savior. Baptisms, sprinkling two weeks ago, immersions today, new member reception last week, ongoing members here week after week after week. It all seems so benign, so, well, ordinary. But listen, when you hear stewardship, when you hear Harvest Sunday, pledge cards, think. We are stewards of the mysteries of God. God wants all we have to give. Each one of us may figure out what that means, then pledge it, give it, so that by our collective witness systems, relationships are transformed right here among us. Can we love each other through the necessity and sometimes the discomfort and pain of change? Can we discipline ourselves for the good work that must be done in our community and city? Can we trust each other to let the leaders govern and the staff work and the people sing and serve and pray? so that we who were the first to set our hope on Christ might live for the praise of his glory. Can you say this? I surrender all. Time, talent, my money, my prejudices, grudges, fears and apprehensions, old wounds. Name the thing that inhibits the giving of your all in the service of our jealous God. Can you surrender the shackles of your history can I surrender the arrogance of my way, my intellect, my status, my needs? Can you say this? I surrender all freely will I serve God. Amen.